Toss in three wildly distinctive personalities. All I dream about is clay. Mwah. Plus three clever projects. And you've got a craft show that'll have you saying, that's clever. to Maine to watch this mother of two dive into a paper design that's swimming in metal and fabric. Next on That's Clever. Welcome back to That's Clever. We're on the road finding real people making really cool crafts. This mom from Maine pulls together her materials and sinks them into a paper design. I'm Becky Shadwick from Sanford, Maine. I'm a retired Marine. A mom and a scrapbooker. And today I'm going to make this layout featuring my daughter Jessica. Welcome to my craft room. This is where I create. To get started on this layout, I'm going to cut some fabric. I've selected water fabric for my layout. The first one has fish. To ensure that the fabric is cut straight, I'm going to use a ruler and a pencil to mark before I cut. I started the layout with the photo, which was a water photo, and then I went and selected fabric that went with it. Once I have the fabric cut, I'm going to adhere it to the background paper. I'm going to spray the fabric with adhesive to adhere it to the background paper. I'm going to cover my work surface first. I'm making a water layout, so I'm going to find a great blue paper. I love this tone, but the ridges just don't work. Bubbles and blue. I'm going to use the spray adhesive to get total coverage. I found this really great fiber to make my seaweed. I'm going to make some glue lines down the page, just three. I want to create the leaves for my seaweed with a little more texture, so I'm going to use crumpled cardstock. I'm going to start with the plain cardstock, wet it, and crumple it. I let the paper completely dry. It takes about two hours, and then I can cut the leaves. And now I'm using the jungle leaf die. There's a metal blade in here that will cut the shape like a cookie cutter. Once I have all the leaves cut out, I'm going to add even more dimension by folding the larger ones in half, and then gluing them all randomly to the seaweed. I'm going to begin working on the porthole. I'm going to use this template to help me cut some circles. I wanted the center of the porthole to look like hammered metal, so I'm using the crumpled cardstock to get that effect. After the large ring is cut out, I'm going to need to cut some narrow rings to make a border on the inside and the outside. to the sticky spray adhesive. I completely covered the porthole with gold embossing powder. Once I have it completely covered in powder, I'm going to heat set it with the embossing tool. I'm going to embellish the porthole with some brass nail heads. Next, I'm going to attach the hinges with brass mini brads. Now it's time to add the photo to the porthole. I have this really great shot of my daughter underwater in the pool in summer. We were having a cookout and everybody was in the water. And we had a bunch of cameras going. I don't know if I took this picture or if my husband took the picture. 
printed the titles on cardstock and now I just have to cut them out. Next I'm going to make Explore totally metallic using a pigment pad and the gold embossing powder. I'm going to heat set the embossing powder with the heating tool. Next I'm going to stick everything down to the background paper. I'm going to start with the title using a sticker machine because it puts a clear coat of adhesive along the back. I'm getting out mini brads to attach the possibilities and the porthole. I printed my journaling on transparency film and it tells about my daughter and how she's always in the pool at summertime and so I had to get in the pool and we had to take pictures of her under the water. So now that I have all of my main elements in place, I just need to add a few more accents. Charms. And finally, I've selected some seashell stickers. They're very realistic looking and they will accent a bottom border. I've put on my last seashell. The layout is finished. I think that went swimmingly. It's back to Sanford, Maine to check out Becky's fun new project. Her guitar pick basket lid is music to our ears. Would you like to see something else I make? It's basket lid made from an altered CD. I'm going to start by punching out five stars. I'm going to take my ruler and my stylus and I'm going to score each star down the center so I can get a clean fold. Once the stars are folded, I glue them together using a very strong liquid glue. It sets up really fast. After the stars completely dry, I need to spray it with stone fleck. I'm also going to do the guitar picks. There's 14. I'm going to cover the CD with paper. I'm using a strong liquid glue. And to avoid bubbles, I give it a little twist. After the glue dries, I need to trim off the excess paper. I have my CD covered with paper and now I'm going to attach the dried guitar picks with a clear dimensional medium. I want to be able to apply all of the picks at the same time so that I can move them around and get them situated before the medium sets. I'm going to decorate each guitar pick with a star brad, but first I have to cut off the prongs. To attach the stars, I use the same medium. After all the stars are in place, I'm just going to continue to slop on this medium all over the whole cover and it's going to hold the lid. And then I just set the knob right in the middle. And this is my crafty lid for a five and a half inch basket. Talented crafters are turning out great ideas everywhere. You've just seen three.